On today's show, gruelling conditions cap a gruelling season at the Australian Nationals as the best top fuel drag racing talent from America throw everything at denying the locals from flying the Australian flag. Welcome to Speed Week. We open the show today with the pinnacle of drag racing. It comes in the form of the coveted Australian Nationals as the season finale for Top Fuel and the Aeroflow Sportsman Series. The event rounded out the longest Andra drag racing season in decades with championship titles decided in the final race for many categories. All amidst hot and windy conditions that blurred the senses and exhausted data records. Here's the action from Sydney Dragway. Let us know your favourite moments on Facebook and Twitter. The 2013 Andra Top Fuel Championship has had it all. Big explosions. Oh, huge eruption. 360s. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Hard racing. Side by side, great run for both of them. And Darren Morgan has all but taken it out. But the title of Top Fuel Underdog may not apply to the Mildura-based team anymore. Well, three in a row and four championships is pretty exciting. Um, we keep saying we're the underdogs, but I don't know if we are anymore. The championship is the championship. It's, uh, you know, it's happened now, and what we need to do is just focus on winning. Um, like I said, that's, that's what we get paid to do. So, um, you know, let's go out there, have a bit of fun, and uh, see if we can uh, turn the wind light on. Four times Australian Nationals winner Steve Reid is only just out of reach of Phil and Darren at the top, but is keen nonetheless to get his hands on another gold Christmas tree here at Sydney Dragway. You know what we like with Sydney, I mean we really enjoy Sydney and we really do pretty well here. Uh, I mean there's some big hitters here this weekend so it's going to be a fabulous race I reckon. Nine times NHRA champion Tommy Johnson has made the trip down under and says the Australian Championship is up there with the best. You know, the drag racing here is, is probably the, the best compared to the U.S. And anywhere I've been, I've raced in Europe and the Middle East, and, and this is as close as it gets to the U.S. Uh, for drag racing. With an eight-car strong field, the Australian Nationals is set to be the round of the year. And with a combined output of over 60,000 horses on track, this weekend, these nitromethane monsters are sure to get your attention. So, with a championship hanging in the balance, there will be no retreat other than the 4X Gold Retreat we see here on course at the Sydney Dragway. Fans turning out in their thousands to check out this absorbing battle between Darren Morgan and Phil Lamartina. There's your points. Coming into this final round here at the Australian Nationals, Morgan and Lammy, they're the two that really will be fighting it out here this weekend. Crowd enjoying the action, fans of all ages getting set for an epic qualifying session here at Sydney Dragway. It all began with a bang too, as Darren Morgan made the one qualifying run he needed to secure the championship, but lit the motor up in the Victorian American Imports car. In the opposite lane, Damien Harris ran the quickest time of the session, a 4.89, to take early command of the ladder. And Mark Stamatis, who after making one hit in the Bellevue Dragster, decided he'd be too ill to race the rest of the event and would sub in former Aussie champ Phil Reed. It would be in the second qualifying session where things really begin to heat up for the top fuel field. Rookie John Lamartina opened the session with a 471 at 504 kilometers per hour, but had a big braking area fire as the rods exited the motor. Steve Reed made up for his first session hiccups, blasting out a 490 for supercharged batteries as Phil Lamartina again struggled to keep his books dragged and from spinning the tires. The new national champion Darren Morgan put down a much better run this time hitting a 481 as Terry Sainty threw a blower belt off the car at mid-track. 
year could be forgiven for seeing double as Rapasada Autosport International rounded out the session with Tommy Johnson Jr. moving up to second position on a 4.79 pass, while Damian Harris had trouble keeping cylinders alight on his side of the track. The final session for Top Fuel would see John Lamartina quick again with a 4.79. But it was his brother Phil who would steal the limelight, running 4.715 seconds at 524 kilometers per hour to steal the top spot by just three thousandths of a second. Terry Sainty ran his quickest time of qualifying, but it came at a big cost. Pushing a head gasket and then lighting up the night at Sydney Dragway alongside brother-in-law Phil Reed. Damien Harris would close qualifying with his quickest run of the day, a 4.79, putting him up into third for eliminations. So at the end of all that, the Lamartinas own the number one and two spots. There is your sick chrome ladder. And Lammies, look at that, three one thousandths of a second. Talk about crashing your younger brother's party. Harris strong for him. American Johnson in fourth. Morgan Reed, Sainty and Phil Reed rounding out your eights. Supercharged batteries, uh, they've come on board for the last two meetings. Unfortunately, uh, in colder, uh, we didn't do as well as what we would like for them. But as it was, you know, it was a pretty spectacular blow up, so they were happy with that. I mean, this meeting, we hope to go the whole way and uh, put it together and have a win for them. This is a tow in the water for them. Uh, both Heather and I would really love to, to be able to do the full round of the championship next year and hopefully give them a win you know i think that we can do it is there's no shortage uh, of experience here uh, what has to stay every single time is just uh, the amount of spare parts that we've got and we just we can't afford any more to buy any more and it was just that's what they're saying in melbourne it was just a spare inlet manifold which we didn't have it would be the first time in my career really that i've had corporate backing and it was it is a lot of pressure and unfortunately added pressure, uh, Heather's mum's in hospital. And um, she's gone up there, so she won't be here. Oh, she'll be with us in spirit, but she's been, um, she's been with me for every race, that, you know, since we've been together, so it'll be a big difference. I think a lot of the time you make your own luck. So consequently, as you know, you just strive to do the best you can and we always love to punch above our weight and it gives us uh, great pride in, uh, it's a young crew here, that we've, they've all been together over five years and it's a very tight-knit bond and so consequently it's as much for them as what it is for us. That if we had corporate backing, I mean, to be able to go racing more. You know, and having the public come in and congratulate us and when I'm on the road, I mean, as you know, I've got a trucking company um, when I'm on the road, people go, but I thought you were a top fuel driver. Yeah, but it's like I'm just a normal person. And that's what we enjoy. So we, we, we've won just by being here, but to actually take out all these big guys, that gives me the greatest pleasure. So here we go. This is the way your sick chrome race ladder looks, and Rusty is salivating even more than usual at the prospect of what this eight-car field will look like when we shimmy them all down to just two at the end of the Australian Nationals. Rusty, the oldest and most spectacular drag racing event in Australian drag racing history. It is, and it's one of the most prestigious events you can get anywhere in the world. That's why they come from everywhere, far and wide, to race at this event. First round matchup, this is a big one. Terry Sainty in the all-Australian built dragster. I love this thing. Up against the Lamartina car. You just want to see Sainty get a big result. It's been a while since they've had that car down the strip in championship round winning contention. But let's face it, they only come out a couple times a year. It is a very restrictive sport in terms of expense. These teams work very hard to secure sponsorship to allow them to do that. And one of the best teams in the game at doing it is on track right now alongside Terry Sainty. Hasn't John Lamartina come on and leaps and bounds in one round? Well, I tell you what, he's only raced one run round of the championship. This is his second start. He's starting from number two spot here this weekend. 
It's, it's quite an incredible debut here at Sydney Dragway. These guys are really, really switched on. And now that they're running two cars, they're getting a lot more data on the racetrack, something that Terry Sadie doesn't have a whole lot of at the moment, running that very unique combination. Big Brother Phil couldn't have let John have quick time, could he? I mean, top qualifier, what a result that would be in just your second round as we see Steve Reid preparing for battle. He'll be up very shortly. There's a look at the rear of the Terry Sainty, three billet foul entry. What can Terry do with Newby? That's not Wayne. That's John Lamartina. Well, he's out in front, stretching Ooh. it, burning up some parts, though, really chewing through it. You see the blower belt come off. 497, still gets over th nearly 370 kilometres per hour, but that was not a happy race car at the top end of the racetrack. Just watching the run from Sainty's point of view, it tracked beautifully till about half track and he shut it down. Of course, there was a newbie connection to the Lamartina team in Cold Park. Yeah, there was. Uh, Wayne Newby was going on the second car for those guys, but yeah, not a good run there for John Lamartina as far as the parts attrition goes, but certainly he gets the win. Those guys will be back for the next round. This is a bit of a game of musical chairs here this weekend. Unfortunately, West Aussie Martin Stamatis, whom you just bumped into in the pits just before this run, has subbed in Phil Reed. Talk about super sub. You're saying he's just really not well. Yeah, he wasn't feeling very well coming into the event. They put Phil Reid on notice and they said, well, you know what, it may be the case. Look, Martin tried to make one run in the first round of qualifying, had massive, massive tyre shake, and it knocked him around so much that he actually received a concussion. So wow. he, he's taken the wise step. He's got out of it and said, you know what, I, I can put my hand up when I'm not good to go. And I tell you what, when you've got a three-time national champion as your super sub, well, you might as well take advantage of it. And this is not a car that you would just go, you know what, I'm not feeling 100%, but I'll I'll just manhandle the thing down there. I'll be right. It takes more of a man, I think, to get out and say, I'm not 100% here. As you said, Phil Reed, great opportunity for him. Normally, with brother Bruce tuning the spanners, but not this weekend. No, not this weekend. Got Rob, Rob Cavignino uh, calling the shots as usual. The only thing for Phil Reed is this car's a little bit cramped. When you look at him and Martin side by side, Martin's a, a fair bit shorter than Phil, so he's a little bit cramped inside that car. A few uh, controls in different locations, but he'll get this thing down the track. Crew Chief Aaron Hambridge stepping away as Phil Lamartina, second in the championship this year. Darren Morgan already wrapping it up in qualifying, but there's plenty to play for. A gold Christmas tree at the Australian Nationals. Ooh, big hole shot to the Lamartina car. He's mixing up the cylinders, though. Pushing out a head gasket, and I'll tell you what, 5-1-4 only barely squeaks out the win over Phil Reed. Phil Lamartina on his way to the semis. And a whole lot of per uh, parts burnt up there. Wasn't a bad rag race, really, considering both guys had problems. You can see just how close <laughs> the boys trying to will Phil Reed on there. Uh, it's a tricky racetrack, this one. Very, very hot conditions. You can see as soon as it started spinning, the tyres started dropping cylinders. Just pushed out a head gasket. That was what the green flame that we could see there burning the copper. But you know what? They got lots of parts. They'll be back for the semi-final round. Very windy here as well. Fortunately, with the bushfires in the area just recently. There's been a whole lot of discussion about the weather conditions here. It's hot, it's gusty. You can just see those uh, banners in the background there really copping a bit of a hammering. This too will be a great battle. Isn't it great to have Tommy Johnson Jr. back in the Australian Nationals field as we prepare for Damien Who Harris and Steve the Pom Reed to load up here in a moment as well. Yeah, Steve Reid looking for a little bit of a better showing than what we saw at Calder Park. Tommy made one pass down there, had massive engine damage. They've taken it back, they've fixed the car up, they've got it running pretty well this weekend. He got into the four-second zone uh, in qualifying, but probably needs to step it up a little bit here against Damien Harris. Damien Harris has really been running some good numbers in this car. They've got this thing sorted. There it is, the at Reid Speed Racing, supercharged batteries, top fuel dragster. Damien Harris, who, let's face it, has had his share of spectacular situations for all the wrong reasons this year, would love to finish off with a strong result here at the Nationals. Yeah, he wouldn't. They've got the matching cars here this weekend. The transporters now, they, they match everywhere around the world. The American cars look exactly the same as the Australian cars, and I'll tell you what, what a professional outfit that Rappasada team is. Green lights, nothing in it at the start line. I'll tell you what, Steve Reid was peddling that thing, trying to get it to hook up. Damien Harris runs it through for a good run in under the conditions of 481, just a tick over 470 kilometres per hour. Devastating for the Pong. Steve Reid turned the tyres a double step, just then a bit of a wheelie in that situation as well. Yeah, you can see that the track conditions just caught them out there. Too much horsepower for the racetrack. He tried to get it to hook up, but it just wasn't going to happen. Damien Harris was gone. Darren Morgan comes into this opening 
Stoush right here, safe in the knowledge that the fourth Australian Championship is in the BAG. But we know one thing about Darren Morgan, he's not here just to make up the numbers, get that title and go home. He wants to win another Christmas tree here this weekend. I believe he does, but he's really going to struggle here. He tried to do a burnout, but the car just didn't smoke the tyres, nothing at all. Now, usually that wouldn't be too much of a problem. As long as you get the water off the tyres, and with the heat that we've got today, it wouldn't be so much of an issue. But in the top fuel drags, as soon as you do that, you do a little bit of a dry launch with it, it puts a lot of heat and a lot more wear on the clutch, and these cars are so finely tuned that that could come back to bite him on a track as tricky as this one today. They've had so many major sponsors on board throughout the course of the year, haven't they? Just been on survival mode, pulling people in Victoria America imports on this weekend. They've always had great support from Pavtech and those sort of guys as well. As we've heard, Tommy Johnson Jr. What a great opportunity for him is lurking next year with one of the true greats of the sport. Yeah, absolutely. Last time we'll see him in the Rapisada car for the foreseeable future. But certainly he's got a big opportunity next year driving for Don Schumacher Racing in Nitro Funny Car. He's no stranger to it. He's won most of his national events in a funny car, but he's, he loves the top fuel cars and he wants to get a win for the Rapisada team before he goes home. So he's up against the Australian champion, the boys. They look... Well, effectively amped. What can the American do with the Mildura man? He's got him, I think. He has. Big hole shot, dropping cylinders. It's an ugly win, but a win nonetheless. 491, 431 Ks. Morgan wasn't far behind. He's got problems, though, really late on the shoots. 483 kilometres an hour. He'll end up at the beach. Unfortunately for Morgan, there's no beaches in Mildura, although there's one near the river in Apex Park, but that's not where he wanted to end up. Certainly did a good job in pulling this car up at the top end of the racetrack. You can see Tommy Johnson Jr., that thing just started to haze the tyres at around about half track right there. He grabs a handful of brake. That's why it started dropping cylinders. And he did a great job getting that thing to the finish line. That was one for the driver right there. But Darren Morgan, fairly harmless trip to the sand, but still, it's it's never something you like to see. No, he's headed home early too, which is something he'll be disappointed about. Your semi-finals, thanks to Sid Crane. We'll see Phil Lamartina against American Tommy Johnson Jr. And Damien Harris. Harris faces Johnny come lately, Johnny Lamartina in the second of the Fox Lammy entries. Pit report now and top fuel champion Darren Morgan joins us. Well done. A bit bittersweet there getting knocked out in the quarters, but you've won this championship four times now. Yeah, well, we're actually testing for next year, so to have a handle on the clutch that early after only four passes, I'm excited. It went as quick as the um, quickest car in the country and uh, a very accomplished American driver, and we're within fractions of a second, so to have it sorted out in those four passes, we're excited about next year. And what does need to come together for Darren Morgan to be even more unstoppable? Just that, just what we did with that clutch to put in a whole new system and be on top of it that quick. We've got uh, new blowers we're going to run next season. We've got fresh heads, like an upgrade there. We've got upgrade on injectors as well. So, you know, there's a whole package going on here and to, to be that one step in front before we even go into that season, rock on. Well, things didn't exactly end the way Morgan had envisaged to wrap up the Australian Championship, but as you can see, whilst the pebbles might be flying now, top fuel cars will be flying along with the rest of the classes coming up after the break, so make sure you stick around. of the Sydney Dragway with the Andra CEO Malcolm Bully and we have had an expansive year all culminating here in the showdown. It's going to be massive. What can we expect? Summer, this is huge. This is huge. 18 months this season's gone for. It's been a massive, massive effort by every race. So the championship's coming down to the wire here today. Um, we've had a couple fall over the line already, so we've crowned a couple of champions so far and the rest with eliminations going on today, that'll decide a few more championships. It is huge. It's a massive season. And in terms of 2014, there is even more to look forward to. What are the highlights for you? Oh, 14, we've been, we've been planning on 14 for over a year now. Um, we're going to step it up a notch in 2014. Um, there's a few surprises to come out. Uh, there's going to be a lot more racing. Some of the guys, such as Door Slammer and Fuel, they've got a few rounds, some format changes. We're going to be over on the West Coast for the first couple of months of the year. Um, there's a few surprises that are going to be popping up through 2014. Um, so the general public are going to see a lot more Andrew presence out and about before events. Um, we're going to be highlighting our champions throughout the year. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave you hanging on that one for a little one, but 14 is going to be big.
very, very tough field this for Superstock here under very bright skies. Extremely hot and windy conditions here at Sydney Dragway for the Australian Nationals. The oldest drag racing event in the country. And coming into this, Mario Barbon had the championship to win, but he went out in the first round. Yeah, the thing you got to remember when it comes to the Aeroflow Sportsman Series, the most points that you can take into the final round is 300. So despite what we see on the screen there, they all get reset. <laughs> Everyone goes to back to 300, and, well, it's on for young and old. They're even holding out cold Mars bars here, Rusty. Everyone trying to escape the heat. Not exactly great conditions for drag racing when it is so hot. Makes it very difficult to get a, a hold of the racetrack. You see the firebird of Paul Beecham. Man, who went out in the first round of the Australian Nationals last year. So this is a massive improvement. Someone give that man a sponsor. Yeah, he's a very, very tough racer. Sometimes pro stock racer as well. He's attempted to qualify for a couple of fields in the very, very tough pro stock competition. You want to talk about pro stock? Well, Cliff George, it's not exactly a pro stocker. They call these a baby pro stocker, the yeah. B Altered Production Automatic Class. Basically, it's a pro stock car with an automatic transmission in it. Very, very tough car. Now, remember, this is index racing. So these guys are running off their respective class indexes. Clint George, the B Altered Production Automatic. Paul Beecham. A modified production automatic. So, respectively, the index is 788 for Clint George and an 862 for Paul Beecher. And Clint has not hurt that index coming into this semi final right now. So, he's been extremely consistent and he's been looking after that index. It's going to be a very tough race. These two guys very sharp on the tree. In fact, Clint George is a, a former track champion here at Sydney Dragway. So, he is a very, very tough customer. Waiting for the boys to come into stage. Crowd here enjoying the Australian Nationals. Super Stock semi final one. Well, advantage goes to Beecham, but he's getting very close to that center line. In oh. fact, I think he may have tagged it. Really doesn't matter now. Clint George goes 754. He's going to dip that index going into does. the final round by a pretty big margin on that 788. Beecham, well, at 913, it was never going to get the win with a car like that Cavalier chasing him down. Well, that's it. George had to sacrifice the index really and just chase him because otherwise he could have gone out the back door protecting his index. And what's the point if you're not in the final? Exactly right. Exactly oh. right. You can see it just starts turning the tyres. Oh, he did a very good <laughs> job of saving that. Man, that was close. Aeroflow, as they have done all year, presenting our Sportsman Drag Racing Championship. Now, Darren Parker with the Ridgeway Motorsports man on board. That's always a massive thing to put in your back pocket when you come to any event. Indeed it is. He's going to take on John Kuyper, the Sydney racer here. Went under the national record for his class every single qualifying pass. All three qualifying runs went under the national record. So it's there to be reset at the moment. Darren Parker, well, he's a similar sort of car to what we saw with with the previous run with Clint George. Exact exactly the same class, exactly the same configuration. But remember, he's running off his own index here of a 757 because of the fact that he heard it in the, in the second round of racing. Waiting for the boys to get after it. Very good light, a .02 light. Look out, here we come, this one's over. Yeah, it looks like Kuyper might have shut it off a little bit early there. 7.57 on the 7.68 for Parker. He's on his way to the final round to take on Clint George. And Johnny Kuyper, well, an 8.60. I think it's his slowest run of the weekend and, and not a very opportune time for it to happen. Darren Parker just rock solid heading towards the final. He's got some seriously talented people working on that team, including Andra Hall of Fame inductee Paul Rogers as well. There's the win. He's headed to the final. And who is he going to face? Well, Clint George is looking very, very racy indeed. Your sick chrome race ladder season. Interesting final coming up in shortly for Superstock. Time now for competition semi-finals. Thanks to Aeroflow Sportsman Drag Racing Championship. The fans settling back and enjoying some hot drag racing in some very hot conditions. Let's take a look at the points now this no coincidence, the top three guys are all on 300 points, Rusty. Yeah, all tied on 300 once the points are reset coming into this round of racing. And, of course, Jason Mag's in there as well with that very tough Corvette. It's going to be hard to win competition this weekend. But let's shoot back to round two uh, eliminated now. Pete Zello in the eight drags to automatic. Very tough car, this one. A genuine six-second car that doesn't have the best of runs at the other end. Yeah, it looks all good at this point, but unfortunately at the other end, he ends up going deep, deep, deep 
into the breaking area and actually gets underneath the netting here. That's where it's got to be a little spooky for you, thinking I'm not really slowing up that much here. Yeah, it's a very odd one because the shoot came out early. You can see the other shoot's also out. It just hasn't blossomed yet. It starts bouncing a little bit. This is the, the bad part. Skids across to the, the top of the sand trap, goes underneath the net and into the second of our catch nets at the end of the sand trap. Not a very fun experience for Pete Zeller. Let's move on to the semi-finals right now. There are two of them in competition. And it, I just love this class. You get such a different myriad of cars. Oh, you do. But, I mean, Greg Lay, let's touch on him for, for an example. Came off the trailer, first qualifying session on Friday morning, laid down the number one qualifying pass, and then put it away. Said, you know what, we've proved what we have to do. We've gone out, we've qualified number one. That's confidence. We'll wait for the first round of racing. And, hey, he's in the semifinals. He's making it work. Sticky racetrack at the moment. Hot, windy conditions. Very gusty down here as well. And they're just some wild-looking bits of kit. There's the geezers in Port Century of Greg Lay. He's up against Craig Geddes in the tiny cube altered, only 284 cubic inches of altered. And, well, it's going to be a tough race. Conditions not really favouring the naturally aspirated car here. It's yeah. going to be very, very difficult for Craig Geddes. Because remember, the, the, the blown car, the supercharged car, really makes its own atmosphere. It can really compensate for the very hot conditions. Uh, Craig Geddes, he doesn't have that luxury. Geddes will leave a little earlier. It'll seem like an eternity. Whoa, Lay drifts straight to the centre line. Will come back strongly and Geddes will get run over. Effectively, the win, a 6.51 with a 1. Wow, well under the 6.92. Yeah, indeed, well and truly under that uh, 6.92 index. Looks like he might have got his parachute caught up on the wall in the braking area there. Tell you what, he did it the hard way. They got way over near the centre line. He really had to muscle that funny car back into the centre of the lane. He didn't get it by much. Craig Geddes made him work for it. Well, Geddes is such a good competitor in this class. There is the win to the naked eye. There certainly wasn't much in it. People scurrying for some shade here at Sydney Dragway for the Australian Nationals. Oh, hello. I thought you might like that one, Oh, mate. hello. Johnny Rosso in the big 69 Chevy Camaro. I love this car. I know I'm a Ford guy, but that thing is just a, a fantastic looking piece of machinery. We both are Ford men and we're both standing at complete attention. It does look absolutely wild, doesn't it? Johnny Rosso up against Greg Clayton. Clayton, of course, who qualified second. Would love to have a crack at this. Now, effectively, the championship is his. Well, it is, it is, because uh, he's gone far enough in the points. The contend contenders have all dropped off, and uh, Greg Clayton has essentially won the championship here, so it's all cherry on the top now for him. But as far as his performances go this weekend, he went 6.05 in qualifying. Very, very competitive car, but he did drop the shoots early. I don't think he showed his full hand here. He's already gone sub-national record. He wants to reset the national record. He's a very tough customer in that altered, knocking on the door of the five-second zone. The cries of the 451, QTR tyre professionals entry right there of Greg Clayton. And up against the 69 Chevy Camaro, a 511. There's no shortage of cubes. When Lay put Geddes away, it did Clayton an enormous favour. Can he make the effort here and put away that beautiful SS? Fantastic looking car, isn't it? Just no stickers on it. Johnny Rosso from the ACT. Fantastically presented car. There's no ugly cars in this no. class, is there? There's not many ugly cars in drag racing, Rusty. They do look fat. Here we go. Semi-final number two. Competition. Greg Clayton being the very smart index racer drops the shoot. Still goes way under that index. Wow, 6.28 on a 663. That's going to hurt him for the final round. Yeah, quite incredible that he had the presence of mind to drop the shoots early, but he did so, and he will go through the final round to take on the funny car. Moving on to Supergas semi-final time now. This is a great class weight, 990 fixed index. It's the same for everybody. Heads up. Let's have a look at your points. Nobody on the maximum 300 coming into this round. It's really wide open. Simon Isherwood's number one. Daryl Stephen, two. Kim Oberauer in three. David Goldie and Matthew Forbes rounding out your top five, all in with a mathematical chance of winning it. Here is Matthew Forbes, as you just said. The handicap of 990. You can go as fast as you like. Just don't go under 990. And if you do, 
don't go under it more than the guy alongside you went under it. Yeah, you basically want to cross the line in front of the other guy by the smallest possible margin. If you can do that, you'll essentially win the race nearly every single time. Now, a lot of these cars can run a lot quicker than the 990 fixed oh, index. Look at the light. You can see, yeah, they're so sharp on the tree. Oh, wow. Matt Forbes way out to the side of the racetrack, side by side with Michael DeRose from South Australia, and Forbes gets a win 10 1 0, beats a 10 1 1, only a hundredth of a second in it. I tell you what, DeRose gave him a good race. That was a very good job for the South Aussie, right down the middle, whereas Forbes just about drove to Wetherill Park before he got the win there. Yeah, good example of, of keeping an eye on your opponent and making sure where they are in relation to you. You really want to be side by side at the finish line with just a little bit in front. Now, where on the planet do you see a Toyota Celica with a 557 cubic inch Ford shoehorned under the bonnet? Uh, one place, yeah. Sydney Dragway. Right. Here. And all the other drag strips around the country. I'll Super what, gas. Gotta love it. Colin Griffin, beautifully presented car. He's been driving this thing for a long, long time. Long time Super Gas racer. He's up against another veteran of the class, Graham Spencer from Victoria in that Commodore. Car is for sale too. The boys just airing out the nightclub just a bit at the moment. Remarkable about the man in that right hand lane as we look down onto it just there. So he's the left hand lane for competition. Colin Griffin, average reaction time for the former Australian champ, a point oh one six second lines. Yeah, and when you consider perfect as triple zero, he is not too far from it. These guys almost sharp. We see a lot of pro stock races come out of super gas. You see it again, 0-1-2 on the tree for Colin Griffin. He is super sharp when it comes down to it. Side by side at the finish line, nothing in it. And Rusty, we talked about this before, a double breakout. But fortunately for Griffin, he's gone under in less than the guy alongside him in Spencer. They went a 9.88 with a 3 and a 9.86 with an 8. And good close racing. Absolutely nothing in it at the end. It was just a bumper, really. And, well, that's all it comes down to. It's the Australian National, so it's a pretty big meeting. And we've still got a job to do for our sponsors. You know, Foots pay us the money to you know, win. So that's what we've come here to do. I guess a little unfinished business. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to take a trophy home. Well, everybody asks what's it like when you hit the throttle on one of these cars, but it's indescribable. The acceleration is phenomenal. So the crowd enjoying the action here at Sydney Dragway for the Australian Nationals, the oldest drag racing event in the country. And it's time for semi-finals top fuel style. Those folks sitting nice and comfortably or comfortably, let's go with that one, in the stands about to be shaken to their very core. I keep, I keep saying this, you have to get to see these things live. The television, we try, it doesn't do it justice until you're sitting there and you get shaken out of your seat. No, there is nothing like it. We've got, well, a couple of identical matchups in the semi-finals. It's Lamartina versus Rapisada. Bill Lamartina and Tommy Johnson Jr. first up, and then Damien Harris and John Lamartina coming up in your second semi-final. The defending back-to-back -back Aussie champ, or three-time back-to-back uh, -back Aussie champ, Darren Morgan no longer with us. He went out thanks to the American Tommy Johnson Jr. who sent the man back home to Mildura. Great opportunities coming up. What a, an amazing week Tommy Johnson Jr. has had with that call-up from Schumacher Racing. He hasn't ruled out that he will run for Rapisada down Australia in the future, though. Well, he's already said this weekend, this is not the last time I'm going to drive for you guys. I will come back at some point in the future and drive. He loves these guys because they gave him the chance. He, you know, he was a guy who'd been out of the drive for a long time. Rapisada's threw him a lifeline, and he's really grabbed it with both hands. And look where it's got him. It's got him back into one of the best seats in drag racing, full stop. And he's up against a man who's really found some good form early in Phil Lamartina. It's been an up and down, bit of a roller coaster run for Phil Lammy. He's certainly on the money. He was top qualifier, bumping the younger brother John out. Of course, there is a third brother, Angelo, who nearly got the call up as well. Fair thought for Mr. and Mrs. Lamartina. Three <laughs> top fuel cars in the future? Hey, I could think of worse things, I'll be honest. But uh, no, you, you've really got to give it to the, the Rapisada guys and the Lamartina guys. Two really young troop crew chiefs as well for these, for these cars. You've got to remember Aaron Hambridge, former top alcohol racer, been around them forever. Santo and Santino on the on the turning the wrenches for the Rapisada team. You know, it really is good to see the future of the sport coming through. Here we go, semi-final number one at the Australian Nationals for fuel. 
Nothing in it at the lights. Nothing in it at the other end. I think Johnson just a 489 with an 8, a 428 kilometre an hour run. He puts Phil on the trailer. A lot of fire, a lot of burnt up parts, and still a lot of speed. I tell you what, we were talking about the tricky track conditions. That was a driver's race right there. So close at the finish line. Tommy Johnson gets it. Tommy, huge scout there and taking Phil out, but your first words were, we might have heard it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, more like, uh, there's no might have, we did. It, uh, it quit before the finish line, but the guy out there was running good in the middle, and it, uh, I knew Phil would be tough. I could hear him over there. I could uh, hear him for a ways, and then start spinning the tires, and then I, he start ducking in the cockpit, because you know it's getting ready to blow up, because it wasn't pretty, but uh, it got the win, and we're going to the final. Now we get the other rapid start of the car in the final, all rapid start of the final. Phil, commiserations, the narrowest defeat there, but I mean, let's celebrate your season. It's been incredible. Yeah, well, look, you know, second, um, we're always there. We're always trying to put up a bit of a fight, and, um, you know, we're doing the best we can for Fuchs and everybody that supports us. And, um, no, you know, these guys lose it to, you know, Rapposada, that's probably um, not bad. You know, they do, a, they put in a lot of effort too as well, you know, for the sport of drag racing, so... Yeah, it's all good at Rapposada or um, final, so, but, you know, unfortunately we couldn't get the job done today and, you know, we'll be back next year. Semi-final action here for Top Fuel. The fans wriggle to the edge of their limestone seats here at Sydney Dragway and outrolls the Rapposada Auto International. And it's a massive effort from Santo Rapposada and this incredible team that competes on both sides of the globe. Yeah, quite incredible really when you look at it. I mean, they've got two cars here this weekend at various points this season. They've also raced two cars in the States as yeah. well. Um, really is a big effort. Now, you might notice there's another car supposed to be in the lane next to him, and it's not. And John Lamartina, unfortunately, the dream's over for the 2013 Nationals. They fired the car up in the pits. They had an ignition issue. They swapped everything they possibly could in the short space of time that they had, but they just couldn't get the problem sorted. And, well, it, it's a good thing for the Rapposada boys because they are going to a final round here, an all-team car final round for the Rapposada Autosport International team. And it's good for Damien Harris, too, championship-wise, because he can now quite possibly move into a top-four finishing situation. Let's face it, they had a period there where they just burnt bits well and truly to pieces in qualifying. So it's great to see Damien edging towards his first final in some time. Yeah, it's great to see him. And he had a, a fantastic season last year, finished second in the points. This year with the changeover to Rapposada Autosport, it, it's been a little bit patchy in places. He's had some good performances, but he's also had a lot of parts attrition, as you said. He'll be looking to lay down a solid number here. He's going to leg it to the finish line, dropping cylinders all over the place. And he says, well, you know what? I don't need to keep my foot on the loud pedal. Wisely rolls off. It still goes 493. Yeah. And reasonable too, 478 kilometers an hour too. So very, very solid run considering, as you said, he didn't have to push too hard. He's on the way to the final. Damien, well done, you're through. And I mean, Johnny didn't show up, he couldn't, the mechanical problems, but it's an all Rapposada final here. Yeah, no, look, it's uh, great for the Rapposada family and to have both cars in the final. And looking forward to racing Tommy and uh, hopefully we can put him on the trailer and send him home to America. So uh, I know there'll be no team orders, which is good, so uh, we'll have some fun. So here's your sick chrome race ladder. The final is lurking, as you heard Rusty say, it's an all Rapposada final. American Tommy Johnson Jr. faces Damien Harris. That's coming up very soon. It's going to be a ripper. Who will try it? The Aussie or the Yank? So the pit raw now and Tommy Johnson Jr. joins me. Now you have competed in five countries. You've won in five countries. What will it take to make it six from six in Australia? Uh, that's the reason I came back. Uh, when when uh, Santo and the boys said we we're going to run here this weekend, and I hadn't won here. I've been here twice before and didn't do very well the first time. The second time got rained out. My goal was to win. and I've won in all those countries. I wanted to make it 100%, so it's nice. We're in the final, got my teammate. I don't think I can ask him to lay down and give me one, because I know he won't, but uh, we're doing good. We got lane choice, that's what's important. So, one more run. So, Tommy, for you to take the win, however, you've got quite a bit of work to do on the dragster. What happened out there? The track is, is extremely difficult. The sun, the wind, and it's got a lot of dirt on the racetrack. We're having trouble getting the cars to hook up all the way down to the track, to the end of the track. And, the first run got lucky, it didn't blow up. That run there, it did blow up right before the finish line. So we've got to change the engines. Get, it's the first time we've heard anything all weekend, but uh, we'll put a new one in for Damien. We'll, we'll, we'll tune it up. We're trying to fix that problem and spend the tires. If we can get that fixed, it'll be a great run. We've had eliminations. We've had the semis coming up after the break. It's the finals. 
for the Australian Nationals at Sydney Dragway. Stick around, it's getting hot. Spectacular view from the 4X Gold Retreat right there as we get set for your final in Superstock. Thanks to Aeroflow Performance Products, your Sportsman Drag Racing Championship comes to a head and it will be Darren Parker up against Clint George. Hoppers Crossing in Victoria up against Shelley Beach in New South Wales. A couple of very different looking race cars. Yeah, slightly different. Both uh, very much in the pro stock style of car, right, with the Chevy Cavalier for Glenn George and, of course, the Pontiac GXP. We've seen quite a few of those in pro stock these days. But Darren Parker, you've got to take your hat off to him today. He's wrapped up the Australian Championship in that car. It, it, you've got to think, it's got to make it pretty hard to focus on the final round here for the, the, the Nationals. I mean, it's the biggest race there is. He's won the championship. He hasn't been able to celebrate yet because he's still got this race to win. And he'd love to win two Christmas trees. You can do that. You can wrap up the Australian Championship and win a gold Christmas tree for the Australian Nationals. Clint George, however, he doesn't give a rat's you-know-what, but the bloke alongside him is the new Australian champion. He wants this Aussie Nationals trophy right now. And the funny thing is, here is both cars exactly the same class. B Alter Production Automatic, but running off different indexes because they went under it by a different amount in the previous round. So this, the index for Parker 768, George with a 771. So Parker doing the chasing here, and side by side, the GXP's out in front. He's going to win it. He's got the double. Darren Parker gets the win, 744 on the 768. Just a fantastic win for Darren Parker. It really puts the cherry on top of the cake. An 0-2-4 light as well. He was razor sharp. Obviously, he wasn't anything thinking about the Australian Championship. It was all about this individual drag race, and he'll get the win. Nice job. Darren, two Christmas trees and now a championship. What was the difference for you, do you think? Oh, to be honest, I don't know. I got, um, we spent a lot of time getting the car ready for this weekend. We had the motor freshen, we freshened the transmission, we freshened the dip. We spent a lot of time in the garage getting ready. Didn't expect it to be 35 degrees, but here we are. We won the championship after the first round yesterday, and we won the nationals today. How good is that? How good is that, Darren Parker? Well done. Mario Barb to be kicking himself, unfortunately. Didn't quite work out the way he had planned. Coming into the final round, Jason Simpson will be third. Stevie Norman back to Camilleri. Clint George finishes back in sixth, though runner-up in the Australian Nationals final. We prepare now for competition. Not time to pack up the Esky just yet. There's a winning grin. Plenty of teeth in that little grin right there. Let's hope that one of these guys is sporting a very similar look as well. Wow. Wild bit of kit right here for your competition final between Greg Lay and Greg Clayton, a pair of Queenslanders. Yeah, very similar engine combinations in these two cars as well. I mean, they, both cars are in the double B class designation. It means it's an iron block. It has to be an iron block. And, uh, well, they're making them run quicker than I think they ever thought they would with these cars. Greg Lay has been running very, very deep into the six-second zone here this weekend. Greg Clayton is knocking on the door at the five-second zone. I tell you, we've got a good race on our hands right now. Great looking car already backed. He's no messing around right there, is it? We're into stage almost. Of course, he can bump in if he wanted to and be a real SOB, but he's not going to do that. This is all in the spirit of competition. Greg Clayton wouldn't do the same back. No, it's all about a gentleman's agreement. You don't do anything that you wouldn't want done to you in, in, in reverse. And, uh, you know, these two guys have been around forever. Of course, Greg Lay, second generation racer. His brother Peter also races a funny car, usually in Supercharge Outlaws. Both will be driving cars at the upcoming Aeroflow Outlaw Funny Car Spectacular as well, so we look forward to that in the coming weeks, but Greg Clayton, he has been running some quick times in that altered, as, as we keep touching on, knocking on the door of the five second zone, he's the national champion now, it's his to take this nationals title. Clayton V. Lay in the final for competition, red light, oh no, Clayton is gone, Lay will win the Australian and he shuts it off. He knows he doesn't need to leg it to the finish line. Clayton goes 6-1-1 on the 6.46 index. I think, I think he's going to be pretty dirty with himself at the other end. You can see it wasn't a clean run either. Look at the front end just dancing about. It's doing what an altar does. It moves left, right, up and down, but lays your winner. Greg, well done. You've just got your first Christmas tree and you've come runner-up a number of times. What lined up this time? Well, the Nationals is the biggest one of the year. We've never won it. We've come runner-up a couple of times. Uh, we just put together a new car that had a pretty good combination and couldn't be happier. It's been a long weekend, so it's been really good. 
So there's your competition points, thanks to Aeroflow Sportsman Drag Racing Championship. And Greg Clayton, your winner. Craig Geddes, Jason Maggs, Cartledge Baxter, Lay, Coleman and Nola. Clayton, what a performance here at the Aussie Nationals. And it's time now for the finals as the crowd well, they really have sat through some hot, blustery conditions. As you see this man on screen right now, he's travelled some 10,000 kilometres to take part in the whole Aeroflow Sportsman Drag Racing Championship. He took seven years off racing while he helped his lovely wife bring up their daughters. And Colin Griffin faces a man who's come back into the sport very pumped up with some big plans for next year, Matty Forbes. Well, I'll tell you what, he's got to get over this race right now. This one's for all the marbles. He's got to win this race to win the national championship for Supergas. You, you can't understate how big this is. And you want to talk about being the best? Well, you've got to beat the best first. He's up against Colin Griffin, who is one tough customer. Well, what do you do? You basically spend 10,000 kilometres and it comes down to the next 30 seconds. And if you want to go even smaller than that, it's inside 10 seconds worth of your performance right now. Both oh, cut an awesome line. Nothing in it on the start line. Remember, for Colin Griffin, this is all about the Nationals win. For Forbes, it's all about the National Championship. I think Forbes is there. He is a 997. How's that? Double doubles up goes the win at the Nationals and also the National Championship. That's huge. And had to do it tough too. He had to put issue it away in the previous round. A former National Champion. Great result for him. Yeah, just fantastic result. Forbes, your winner. And there's the championship right there. Isherwood will get second. Daryl Stephen, who went out early, finishes third overall. Goldie, Griffin, Romeo, Oberau, and Cockrell rounding out your eight for Aeroflow. Matthew Forbes, our super gas champion. Your story is all about going down to the wire. Tell us about it. Definitely. Uh, coming into the event, uh, Simon Ishwood, the defending number one, was uh, in the lead in the points. Uh, we faced him in the second round and we put him out. Uh, it was a tight race because Simon's one of the best out there. And then we worked out for us to win the championship. We had to win the national. So then we went through to the final and met Colin Griffin, who's, again, one of the best guys out there. And we were able to um, put one on him and, and take the win. So we won the nationals and we won the championship in the, in the, the final round. Time now for the final of Top Fuel. Great crowd in the house here at Sydney Dragway for the Australian Nationals. This is going to be an epic battle. The Rapper Sada boys, regardless, are going to get a win here. This is the way it all played out. Lamartina and Tommy Johnson Jr. in the semi. Harris and unfortunately a no-show for John Lamartina with ignition problems in the second of the book's entries. We now see American Tommy Johnson Jr. and West Aussie Damian Harris. Unfortunate, really, for Mark Stamatis. Another of the West Aussies never really got going here this weekend. Yeah, unfortunately, he uh, didn't end up making it into the second qualifying uh, for Mark Stamatis. Uh, but um, he did have Phil Reid take over the, uh, the seat for him. Uh, lost in the first round. But looking at these two cars on the racetrack now, this, this is a huge effort, and it, it can't be understated how much of a commitment it takes from the Rapisada guys to get these two cars on track, both here and then, of course, in the States as well. Tommy Johnson Jr., though, he has made no secret of the fact that he wants to get a win here. Every single country that he has raced in over the years, he's raced all across Europe, he's raced in the States, he's got at least one win in his career. He still doesn't have one from Australia, so this is a, a big, big moment for Tommy Johnson Jr. Well, Damien Harris would love to add the 2013 Aussie Nationals to his list of credits as well, so don't think that there are any team orders. This is not Formula One. This is top fuel, baby. There are no team orders. It is just have at it, unleash 8,000 horsepower. Get yourself down to the other end, quick smart. You know, the other thing that I love, Santo Rapisada, the team owner for these two cars, is standing dead in the middle of these two cars. He was standing at the back of the uh, at the back of the race, the, the start line, I should say. He has literally one foot on each side of the racetrack. That's, uh, that's commitment. Well, he wouldn't have any emotional favourite in this. He just wants to see both cars get down the other end. You'd certainly have to think that whoever gets their first Really, from his point of view, it's irrespective. Massive effort, as you said. The TitanCrane.com.au entry of Damien Harris closest to camera. The American, Tommy Johnson Jr., nothing at the lights. An 039 light for the American. And he will get the win of the Australian Nationals. Johnson, a 480, but 
Tell you what, look at that, a 478 kilometers an hour for Harris. Gets a bigger speed, but can't get the win. Yeah, he was coming home really hard at the top end of the racetrack. You can see the Rappasada guys, they were going to be happy no matter what happened there. But Tommy Johnson Jr. gets a win. That was a driver's race again. He rolled it a little bit deep into stage. Had to grab a handful of brake when it started turning the tyres. Harris was chasing him, but just couldn't quite get there at the finish line. Both cars dropping cylinders. But it's all the American for the 2013 Nationals. Tommy 480 and you dominate your sixth country. What are the words? What are the feelings? I, I got to thank the Rapisarda family. I mean, they give me the opportunity to come over here and race for him. And, and Damien, he's a great teammate, one of the best I've ever raced with. And it feels great to get that victory. I mean, the track conditions were so tricky all day long. And going in the final, I thought, you know, maybe if I can grab the brake about mid course where it keeps coming loose and I could just tug on it a little bit. That's something I've done in the past. And, it was just, Pat, I drew on my experience in the past, and I think it helped it enough to get down through there and run a pretty good number, but we blew it up again, but it turned on the wind light, so who cares? Any chance we can seduce you back? I told the boys this won't be the last time we race together. Just because I got a full-time ride next year doesn't mean I'm not coming back to see them. What a great result for him, but Darren Morgan, take nothing away from him, his fourth Australian championship out of little old Mildura. In fact, Sun Ranger drag races. Morgan Lamartina first and second in the championship. The Pom third. Damien Harris got to fourth. Good result for him. Well, that wraps up a wild weekend of top fuel competition, all part of the Australian Nationals here at Sydney Bragway. But join us next time when the door slammers have at it. Hot and windy conditions at Sydney Bragway. We'll look forward to your company next time. It all began with a bang as Darren Morgan made the one qualifying run he needed to secure the championship. So he goes, semi-final number one of the Australian National to Fuel. Nothing in it at the line, nothing in it at the other end. I think Johnson just. Time now for the final of Top Fuel. It's an 039 line for the American, and he will get the win of the Australian National. Well, that was everything we expected and more in Sydney. And what about a 1-2 top fuel final for Team Rapasada? Who thinks Damien Harris deserves a victory over his stablemate sooner than later? Let us know your thoughts on Facebook and Twitter. Two up and coming events now and Supercross fans, make sure you've got your diary out for this one. The championship reaches the finale this month at Toowoomba with round six on November the 16th. There's also two-wheel action from the Australian FX Superbike Championship that same weekend. Round six comes to you from Sydney Motorsport Park. And if you're in Victoria, come and say hello and catch a monster weekend of Shannon's Nationals action at Sandown. It's the end of the season and many trophies are still without owners. Next week on the show, we've got another hit of Australian Nationals action from Andrew Drag Racing. Top door slammer and pro stock motorcycle are on show and there will be tears, you don't want to miss it. We've also got round five of the Australian FX Superbikes from Sydney Motorsport Park with Formula Rolls, Pro Twins, Naked Bikes and Ultralights under the spotlight. That marks the end of the show this week but you can stay in touch on Facebook and Twitter. Plus there's plenty of Speed Week extras and the show to enjoy at speedweek.com.au. I'm Summer Bogan, it's great to share your Sunday afternoon with you. Let's do it all again next Sunday.